What's going on everybody? C4 here and welcome to the newest episode of the Realistic Rebuilds on Bismod TV. We're doing the most popular team as of, well, obviously there's been more popular teams throughout, but the remaining teams are constantly showing up in the comments. And it's not just the Cincinnati Bengals, it's C4. Do the Bengals move on from their coach? C4, do the Bengals move on from Andy Dalton? C4, do Bengals move on from Andy Dalton and player A, B, and C? AJ Green, Tyler Eifert. Jeremy Hill, Bernard, all those guys. But the most common denominator is Mr. Andy Dalton. So what we're going to be doing here, first and foremost, we did fire Marvin Lewis. I have no idea how that guy still has a job. I assume he has some naughty pictures of the owner or something. Uh, so we made it. Chad Ochocinco is now the head coach. As, as unrealistic as that could be. Probably my favorite Bengal of all time. If I had to have a favorite Bengal of all time. I mean, TJ Hushmanzad, his name's too long to put in there. Uh, and everyone does know I secretly like Vontez Burfick, even though I know he's probably one of the most hated players in the league, uh, just because I was such a big fan of him at Arizona State. But we're going with Chad Ochocinco. And looking at the roster here, oh my God, um, I'm still sick. This is like my fifth time trying to record this because every other time my voice gives out halfway through the video and I sound like crackly half the other voices on YouTube here in the Madden community because they haven't hit puberty yet. Um, so we have Andy Dalton there at the QB spot, and we have thrown him up on the trade block. We're going to see what we can get from Andy Dalton. McCarron's not our long-term option at quarterback. They'll just maybe be a Band-Aid for a year or so. Uh, at the running back spot, Giovanni Bernard. We're going to throw him up and see what we can get. I know he usually excels in the sim. For some reason, he in the sim is one of the most dominant running backs. We're like Blake Bortles in the sim. If you sim like 15 seasons in your franchise mode, Blake Bortles will have a bunch of records. Same goes for Giovanni Bernard. Those are like the two guys that are really, really overpowered. Uh, we threw Jeremy Hill up on the trade block, but he's in his last year of his deal, so I don't know what we're going to get from him. But Joe Mixon clearly is going to be our future here at the running back spot, even though he only has a normal dev trait, 82 overall. And we all know how big of a fan I was of Joe Mixon during the draft phase. Um, we're holding on to A.J. Green. I, I don't want to get rid of A.J. Green. Older wide receivers tend to do well in this sim. We've seen that with Antonio Brown when we did the Pittsburgh Steelers. So we're going to hold on to him. Um, outside of that, you know, John Ross hopefully can develop into someone. Uh, same goes for Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd can emerge as just like a wide receiver four. Uh, that really only gives us, you know, we only have to go and get one one extra wide receiver. AJ Green's probably going to slow down, but we do hope John Ross can develop into like a mid 80s, high 80s potentially. Only has a normal dev trait, uh, but with that speed, as long as he's on the roster, once we control this team in the playoff runs and stuff like that, we're going to get some serious flashbacks to our Pink Slips live stream from Madden 17, where we just abused John Ross. Um, Eifert's 26. That's the money age for rebuilds, really. 26 and under. Maybe 27 in some cases, but 26 and under uh, for these five-year rebuilds. That's the age you want. So Eifert, that is rocking and rolling right there. Uh, we have some depth here at tight end. I don't know if any of these guys are going to be worth throwing up to see if we can get any trades or anything. Uh, I know we can probably make q a fullback. I don't know if we're going to run off the eye. Uh, so we'll hold on to these guys for now. Offensive line is a big issue. We have no tackles. Bowling's the only serviceable starter we have, and he's 28. Uh, center, I mean, Bodine's strong. That's about it. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to go all in on the offensive line, but what we've noticed from all of our rebuilds is that we can usually draft offensive linemen fairly well. There's usually a dozen or so, 74, 75 plus in a draft class. Uh, we have my boy, Carlos Dunlap, Florida Gator, but he's 28, so we're going to enjoy it while it lasts. But luckily, we have Jordan Mills here, 22, 79 overall. Uh, was one of the more outrageous ratings I saw in Madden this year. Like, this was like his base rating almost. I was like, oh, yeah, higher than Derek Barnett. No, no, he was tied with Derek Barnett. It's like, yeah, third round pick for the Bengals is tied with uh, our Philadelphia Eagles first round pick. But we all know, ratings guy, Cowboys fan. Ah. But Willis is good. I mean, at least for this rebuild, once done that, such a slow down, Willis should be able to take over his spot. Uh, then we got Carl Lawson, who's a monster. I can't believe Carl Lawson slipped as far as he did. What was he, at fifth? Does it say what round he was picking in? Show me this. Look at this. Show me what fourth round. Carl Lawson was a fourth round pick. I thought he's probably going in the second round. So a tremendous pick up there for the Bengals, who usually do draft pretty damn well. Uh, defensive tackles. Gene Atkins, 29 again. Kind of more in the scenario. Enjoy while we have him. Uh, going to try to rebuild there. Even though they have Glasgow and Billings who are young, I don't know if they're going to develop uh, into anything really. Uh, linebacker. We got to get it younger there. Vincent Ray, 79. Too old. Minter, 26. So he's at money age. So if he can develop, we're good. There's single with Vontez Perfect, 26. The money age. He's our franchise player at the linebacking core. Um, look at the secondary. It's kind of awkward here. 25. We got, we got some young guys, but look at that. Slow. 
So Denarius probably, you know, I'm pretty sure he's a free agent after this year, so he's going to be gone. I'm, I've been a big fan of William Jackson when he was in Houston. I thought he was, he was like my favorite corner of that year's draft class. And we're going to try to hold on and develop him. I have no idea um, off the top of my head how well any of these Bengals. With some teams, I know how well some of the players develop. I have no idea with Cincinnati. But I feel like William Jackson should definitely develop into like at least one of our two starters at cornerback, which would be nice. Uh, Kirkpatrick, unfortunately, just got re-signed. He's not looking good and he's a whole bunch of cap. Uh, so we'll be trying to get out of that. But yeah, again, we got to get better in the secondary. Alokas, 20, 70, 79. Might be able to survive with him there starting for the remainder of the rebuild, but we'll probably have to improve here at some point. Same goes with strong safety. So all in all, we're going to throw up some of these guys in the trade block, see if we can get any trade offers in. But uh, this is very much a, a quickly tear down and try to turn around quickly because we have a bunch of those guys in, you know, the older people like Dunlap and Geno Atkins and A.J. Green that we kind of need to try to win now. Our window is not that big. So uh, let's see what we can do, what kind of offers come through. And that's win this Bengals team. Not only a playoff game, but a Super Bowl. All right, so it's the first wave of the trades. First up was Vincent Ray, because he is 29. Uh, is it starter? Look at that. We're getting a second, fifth, and seventh from Seattle and or Minnesota. I think we'll take that from the Vikings. They have... Uh, the highest probability of not doing great. And clearly, with that second round in there, they really wanted a linebacker. But here's the here's the big one. Andy Dalton, a first-rounder from the Texans, first-rounder from the Jets, first-rounder from the Cardinals. What was that player? Durant. Oh, my God. Come on. So, Andy Dalton's a weird guy. I mean, we're like, two years ago, Andy Dalton was an MVP consideration. He's been good. Like, barely good for the entirety of his career, I think, would be the summary. But, you know, uh, this is, like, the thing. Everyone wanted me to the Bengals without Andy Dalton. So, what team would realistically... Houston wouldn't. We're not going to take that one because they have Deshaun Watson. The Jets? I can certainly see the Jets because there's no... Realistically, even though we're going to draft a QB, there's not... Like, right now, there's not, like, the next couple years of college football, there's no, like, for sure thing at the quarterback spot. So, we'll take this Jets pick right here. And then, hopefully, we'll get a couple more offers throughout. And uh, we'll, we'll jump in the regular season here. All right, with Giovanni Renner, we got a second, sixth, and seventh from Green Bay, a second from New York. This is a rebuild. You want it. You want these guys gone. So, Bernard is gone. Mixon will be our start. All right, so as we begin season number one, here is our starting line of Agent McCarron at quarterback, Joe Mixon at starter at running back. Uh, we got Boyd Green and John Ross at wide receiver. Eifert here at tight end. Offensive line looks not great. I saw Bodine could be a 77 tackle, uh, but again, you know, same half, you know, six to one half dozen. I'd rather have a 71 center or a 71 right tackle starting. So I uh, will keep him as is. Very worried about this offensive line. As far as defense is concerned, the one radical move I am doing, be all in the spirit of gaining XP. We're putting Jordan Willis as a starting outside linebacker because of moving off of Vincent Ray. We just want to see if I can get him some XP because eventually he will be taken over, I assume, for Carlos Dunlap. Um, but I want to get some XP here as a rookie. So we'll see what he can garner as an outside linebacker. Hell, maybe he can make the full-out transition, but he's very much not a 4-3 outside linebacker. Uh, so, you know, it's it's a, it's a first-year rebuild. Expectations aren't super high, especially because we've unloaded so much. But uh, definitely expect hopefully some building blocks here. Some of our young players perform well. And then we can hit on some of these picks in the upcoming draft or two. All right, so look at the contracts here. Eifert needs the deal needs to get done. He's 26. He's in his prime. Hill will be gone. Minter, we're gonna try to bring back. Uh, this is where it gets a little awkward. I mean, Bodom, we're not gonna have a, probably a better starter, but he's a 76. I feel like if we can hit on a center in the draft that's like 74, something similar to that, be much cheaper than 11 million on the books. And McCarron has not done so hot. We're not gonna reveal the record right now of us midseason. Well, McCarron has proven that maybe he's not set up to be a starter, even though there's plenty of teams that think McCarron's right up there in the same ballpark as like a Jimmy Garoppolo as far as best backup QB in the league that teams should trade for if they really need QB help. Uh, so Minter and Eifert are the big two that we're going to re-sign from this bunch if we can, uh, and then we're going to pop into this offseason. All right, so we're at season's end. MVP went to Tom Brady. Very surprised. Hey, at least it's not Aaron Rodgers, I guess. Uh, as you can tell, we did not make the playoffs. Our team, 6-10. I guess in a rebuild mode, 6 of 10 is not that bad. Because there we still have some studs that are playing for us. McCarron, though, not the option at QB. 3,500 passing yards, 18 TDs, 16 picks. Sacked 62 times. Again, glaring issues all over the place. 
Uh, as far as running concerned, Joe Mixon somehow still got 1,000 yards, 1,100 yards to round up, and seven touchdowns behind a very bad offensive line. The five fumbles are not spectacular, but I will take that for him. Eight touchdowns, Welchers from Jeremy Hill. Uh, as far as receiving, John Ross led the team with 70 catches, 792 yards, two touchdowns. That's not ideal, but it's not also horrendous for a rookie. 965 and 6 from AJ. We got 585 and 4 from Eifert, who we were able to re sign. 663 and 4 from Tyler Boyd. Almost 300 from Joe Mixon. So not terrible. Again, I, I kind of put that on the QB play and the offensive line play. Uh, who was the. I, I guarantee it was freaking Andre Smith. 34 sacks, Andre Smith. That's rough. Um, the defense, Kevin Minter, 120, or 164 tackles, sorry. Jordan Willis, the defensive end that we just decided to play outside linebacker, paid dividends with 121 tackles and five and a half sacks. Nice. Uh, 11 and a half sacks from my boy Carlos Dunlap. Only zero pass deflections. That seems pretty crazy because I didn't have like 16 or something like that two years ago in real life. Uh, Geno Atkins, six and a half sacks, five and a half. Willis, four and a half for Lawson, which that was a little bit higher. Uh, as far as interceptions are concerned, three from William Jackson. I like to see that. Two from Sean Williams, two from Kevin Minter with, you know, we were able to re-sign him as well. And a bunch of guys here with one pick. Um, yeah, uh, let's look here at the yearly awards. We already know the MVP was won by Tom Brady. Uh, but let's see if we got any Bengals here on the short list for any of these things. Oh, that kind of stings. Andy Dalton, number 10 for defensive play offensive player of the year, sorry. Did I just get fleeced? Did, some, did people know that, that uh, Andy Dalton that plays well in the sim and that I'm going to have great frustrations now? Uh, anyway, Joe Mixon coming at number five for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Jordan Willis coming at number two. Look at Smider by the day. Putting him at that outside linebacker spot. Carl Lawson coming at number 10. Uh, best QB, we're not going to Oh, shit. Best QB, we're not going to have anyone there. Running back, no one. Wide receiver, no one. Offensive lineman, definitely no one. Defensive lineman, no one. Linebacker, maybe someone? Nope. DB, definitely no one. All right, so you know it's pretty bad when the Browns have multiple players on the list and you do not. But 6 and 10, you know, it's more about this draft and the draft in year two. That's, you know, how we're going to define this rebuild. Unless we can hit on someone in free agency. Uh, so, yeah, let's pop into the offseason. All right, so what was one of the worst free agency classes I've ever seen? Literally nothing. Not like, not one single player that we could use. The, the thing came, do I want to use Jimmy Garoppolo now? I had no idea he had quick development trait. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater's there, but let's be honest, Bridgewater, I don't think you're going to see him featured in any rebuilds. Um, so, so I want to bring in Garoppolo and not do like, oh, I'm going to try to draft a QB. It just so happens I've hit on all my QBs I've drafted in my rebuilds because I'm obviously not going to pull the trigger on a bad one. But I feel like we'll save Garoppolo for when we eventually do the Patriots. There's a reason why the Patriots aren't trading him. There's a reason why they're holding on to them. I think Bill Belichick believes Garoppolo can take over for Tom Brady. So I think we're going to save Garoppolo for the Patriots rebuild, which means nothing. Not a single player for Chad Ochocinco in his first free agency period because we're going to hit on home run after home run. You're going to call us Mark McGuire after this upcoming draft. All right, so, do, so to do a quick draft recap, I said I was going to hit some dingers. I had four guys that I wanted to try to get. I got three of them, and this is probably the strongest first three picks we've had. Well, not the strongest possible, but the strongest we've had to date in the rebuilds. So in the first round, we got an 82 overall QB, superstar dev trait, Mason Rudolph from Oklahoma State, I think. Just give me a second. There's only one QB taken before us. What? Browns, maybe? The Browns? 79. So yeah, all right. We we made we made out with the top QB in the draft class. Still, we have yet to hit. Like I've seen 87s. Uh, Zach McFarland, I think's his name. Um, but we yeah, 82. I will take an 82 overall superstar QB. I mean, just looking at the two free agents we could have signed, he's better than Garoppolo and or G uh, Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, then the second round. So here's where we got a little cheeky. I actually selected an 80 overall center. I mean, I was like, ah, you know, look at him. He's he was six, like, this is, like, the hugest size I've seen for a center. So I decided, let's just see what happens if we move him to tackle. And he went up, actually, to an 81 overall. So I was like, all right, well, not too often a center will be an upgraded somewhere else on the offensive line. So we made it Trey Adams the tackle from Washington, 6'7", 295 pounds. And then here, another position change that's benefiting us. 
we selected in the third round. He was a 79 overall linebacker in the middle. We didn't need a middle linebacker, so I just moved to left outside linebacker, and he turned up to an 80, so we made him Marquise Haynes from Ole Miss, 80 overall with the quick dev trait. So there are three bona fide starters. Couldn't, and we have like two first rounders next year. I think two second rounders as well. Uh, so we definitely have all the tools to build this and start this rebuild off, off right. Uh, in the fourth round, we got a 74 guard, uh, normal dev. Fifth round, 72 guard. Fifth round, 72 guard. Sixth round, 74 D tackle, normal dev trait. Uh, we got a punter here in the sixth, and then just took an absolute flyer out a linebacker that had. Insane combine stats. Unfortunately, he's only a 68. But overall, very, very strong draft class. Starting things on the right foot. So let's jump into year two. All right. So as we start year two, I decided to actually change things around. More importantly, on the defensive side of things. Mason Rudolph will be our starter at QB. 82 overall. The new future franchise QB. You hope. Mixes up to an 85. We got Green, Boyd, and John Ross. John Ross only up to a 78. So not the, not the hottest start, I thought. I thought by now he might be at least an 80. Uh, offensive line, look, random drafted guy. We didn't even modify. We'll be starting at right guard. We got Trey Adams here at left tackle. Um, so for really on defense, Haynes will be starting as outside linebacker. But I decided to move Carlos Dunlap into D tackle. I mean, he's 6'6", 280, 285. That's like, you know, you could play D tackle. And that way there, we could have all of our guys on the field. So Willis and Lawson both get to start right away. Um, so hopefully pay dividend. Will Jackson somehow got a quick dev trait. He's up to an 81. So that's looking good for one of our corner spots. But still, um, you know, looking forward to probably not doing a whole lot this year. But we have two firsts, three seconds in next year's draft class. Um, so, I mean, we're kind of just holding on until then. Let's see the midseason point. If there's any contracts, we will talk about it. And if not, we'll go right to the offseason. All right, so here we are at contract time. We have our two big dogs on the defensive front, Dunlap and Atkins. Dunlap's deal, 12 mil over two years. I already can tell I sneak peeked at a record. He is excelling at the D tackle spot. We'll give him that. But for Geno Atkins, he's 30 and he wants a three year deal for 47. That is a lot of money for a 30 year old. But, you know, I'm not going to go much higher. I think 50 mil will be my absolute max if he won't take this. Will he take it? He wants to make more to rate. So uh, I'm going to try to bid him. I'm setting the cap at 50. Even that, I don't feel good paying it. But I know there's Bengal fans out here that know they would never have. Really, Geno Atkins is one of those guys that's probably going to be there until he retires. But 50, I can't offer him more than 50 mil. If not, we'll let him at the waiver wire, and maybe we can bring him back for cheaper. Well, all right. Well, that was a quick turnaround. As in two years, in year two, we are in the playoffs. In the wild card round, taking on the 9-6-1 and one. Miami Dolphins hosting them. I'll take that with a rookie QB. We haven't even spent his XP yet because someone told me in the comments to turn off auto spend XP so we can do the damn thing, do the deal ourselves. Um, yeah, let's look at how, okay, we finished, hey, we got an NFC, AFC North title, tied, but we're in first spot, our, our second year here, the Mason Rudolph air seems to be spectacular, we got 4,100 passing yards, 33 TDs, 12 picks, 31 sacks, the sacks cut in half from a year ago, all right, looking good, running the ball, Joe Mixon, almost 1,200 yards, 11 TDs, he's playing really, really well, and no fumbles, he had five fumbles last year, I thought that might be a little bit of a worry, but he's playing well. We got uh, almost 300 yards and two TDs from Mason Rudolph to add to that. Okay. As far as receiving is concerned, we get 85 catches, 911, 911. Whoa, okay. Settle down there, Eifert, and three TDs. Tyler Boyd, 862 and 9. 1,006 for AJ Green, 677 and 8 for John Ross, 334 and 3 for Mr. Joe Mixon. What do we have on the offensive line? For our starters, bowling one sack. I mean, let's. Eh. We'll take that. I'll take that every day of the week. As far as defense is concerned, 126 tackles for Minter, 116 for Vontez. Perfect. We got 12 and a half sacks for Kyle Lawson, 11 and a half from Willis, and nine and a half from Dunlap. So moving Dunlap to D tackle and letting these two guys start is paying immense dividends. Five sacks from Geno Atkins, who we were able to re-sign as well. Four sacks for Vontez. Perfect. On the sack, uh, picks front, we got three from William Jackson. We got two for rookie Haynes, two for Drake Patrick. Again, maybe could be improving there. That'd be the one spot on the defensive side of the ball. I think we could do better. Look at the yearly awards. MVP went to Tom Brady. Okay. What about offensive player of the year? Do we have any Cincinnati Bengals? Mason Rodolph coming in. Number nine. Nice to see no Andy Dalton on that list as well. Uh, for defensive player of the year, we had no one. Offensive rookie of the year went to Mason Rudolph. Already had the superstar dev trait. 
So I don't know what how much more we, we can really get from that. Uh, defensive Rookie of the Year, Marquise Haynes coming in at number five. Best QB, we got Mason Rudolph, already a top five QB in the AFC. For running back, Joe Mixon coming in at number four. Wide receiver, we got no one. All right. Offensive line, no one. Okay, that's a little rough. Defensive line, we got Carl Lawson at number six. For linebacker, we have no one. Uh, DB, probably no one. All right, so sleeping on our defense a little bit, but that is fine as we have our playoff berth. So because it's year two, we're just straight up gut. Let's let the sim take over. We'll just uh, we'll play the moments, but we're not actually going to play any of the moments. But let's jump into this game against the Dolphins to see what we can do. All right, here we go. Our big time matchup against the Miami Dolphins. Can the Bengals break the curse and finally win at least a playoff game? Already down seven zip. We have the young QB. It's not looking so hot already. Definitely not looking hot. Hey, we got the red zone. There we go. 10 7 ball game, but Miami's going down the field with ease and able to score a field goal. But hey, we're making them settle for field goals and not touchdowns. And just like that, we have taken the lead on the back of this young. Franchise QB has to settle for a field goal. There's a turnover. There we go. 24-13 for your Bengals. Let's go. All right. Oh, no. All right. Not the second half we wanted as we're down. And we're, we're not looking so hot. Big field goal. We missed the field goal. Oh, this is it. This is the beginning of the end. Begin oh, no. We tied up. We tied up at 31 apiece. Our defense is gassed as they give up a field goal. Now it's all or nothing. We're in the red zone. And they make the touchdown. Is this the team to do it? Oh, no. Are they going to find a Bengals way to lose it? No, they don't. Somehow, somewhere, the Cincinnati Bengals are able to win a playoff game under Chad Ochocinco. Looking at Mason Rudolph. Look at that. Four touchdowns, no picks in his very first playoff game. We got mixed. The run game wasn't so hot. Eifert, nine catches, 92 yards, and a touchdown. Boyd and Green also had big days. 15 tackles for Minter. We got a interception from perfect an interception from minter minter having one hell of a day as we are moving on to the afc divisional round let's go all right here we go against the 11 and 5 patriots with the super bowl qb everyone knows about brady we're already up seven nothing brady got the mvp back-to-back -back mvp in this save seven seven ball game it's time for mason rudolph to arrive 14 to 7 jumping out. oh my god and we're in the red zone Oh, you gotta get a touchdown here. 21 to 7. And we have the ball. Oh, and then we let them get points at the end of the first half. But this is still pretty damn remarkable. I think we're gonna take this. 28 to 10. Are the Patriots gonna come back? Are we gonna fail to run the ball and control the clock and close this damn game out? Potentially. Maybe not! 35 to 20. This is actually ridiculous. 42, 42 to 20. The Bengals said, what has happened with the Cincinnati Bengals that we have used to know? Mason Rudolph is an animal. Is that like the same stat line he had last week? 30, 305 yards, four touchdowns. So Mason Rudolph has opened up his playoffs. Eight touchdowns, no picks. As the Bengals are headed to the AFC Championship ball game. Mixon, big day, 118 yards, two touchdowns. A.J. Green, nine catches, 111 yards, two touchdowns. On defense, what we have? We had a sack from Willis, an interception from Vontez Perfect, who's been on fire. This is unexplainable, but we're certainly going to take it as we're going to be playing the winner of the Oakland Raiders and the Kansas City Chiefs. And they better be watching out, especially after Mason Rudolph just did this to Tom Brady. What's he going to do to Alex Smith or Derek Carr? Let's go. All right, here we go. 13-3 Chiefs in the snow. Can this miracle run continue for the Cincinnati Bengals? As we are opening up with a touchdown in the opening drive. All right. All right, okay, 7-7 seven, seven ball game. We're just marching down the field. Oh, oh, look the hell is doing. We missed the field goal. That could be the turning point right there. It should have been 14-7. 14, 14, oh, we're, we're struggling in the snow here, people. We're struggling in the snow. Oh, no. No, come on. Let's go, team. Okay, cut the lead in half. 10-point 10 ball, 10 ball game. We're going for it on fourth down. We couldn't convert. That's it. That's probably it. Oh, yeah, you know what? I didn't even think we are going to make the playoffs. Like, this offseason upcoming is our, is our big offseason. And the fact that we're one game away from the Super Bowl with what we have working, I think, we're, you know, it's promising. Madden Sim, of course, we're probably going to get three wins next year or something crazy like that. But, hey, very, very proud of this team. Very proud of my boy Mason Rudolph. Who did he, did he throw a pick today? 
No picks. So he went 10 touchdowns, no picks in his first ever playoff run. That's definitely something promising to build on. So let's jump into the offseason. So very close with the Bengals. I'm feeling good about this one. We might be able to win it in three years. All right, so looking at the free agency period, we have $47 million. So I'm going to try to splash on two guys we have yet to feature any of the rebuilds. We have Gaithers, who we, we went in on, but there's a lot of bids there. So Ronald Darby, we're one-point favorites over the uh, the Detroit Lions. Hopefully we can land him because he'd be a valuable starter. And then HaHa Clinton Dix, he's an absolute play, playmaker. So we went in. Redskins, always a super bid. They're one of those teams for some reason. Maybe that's a Madden glitch that bid a lot of money. But Clinton Dix would be a big-time upgrade over George Aloka, who's been serviceable for, you know, what it's worth. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we can land either one of these two guys. But it is our big-time draft with five picks in the first two rounds. It's time for us to go in, fellas. Let's go. All right, so here we are with our first playoffs. You know, successful. So it's time for the draft. And look at the draft recap. We have the number one overall pick. I believe that's what we got from the Jets in uh, in relation from the Andy Dalton pick. So what we were able to select with the first round is to build this offensive line with the number one overall pick. We got Isaiah Prince, the tackle from Ohio State. Superstar depth trade. Only an 82. I've seen 84 tackles, but this is definitely like right up there in the top tier. Run block's not ideal, but for you know what you want for your left tackle is to be strong and have good pass blocking. So we have a bona fide stud, uh, you know, as good of a tackle as like really have to think back to maybe the Steelers rebuild last time we hit on an offensive lineman that was this good. Uh, then with our second first round pick, the one we held, we selected a wide receiver. And we made him Christian Kirk, 80 overall, only normal dev trait, nothing too, too special about him, but he can now take the spot for really Tyler Boyd, who wasn't developing a lot, so that our wide receiver core for at least the next two years, you would have figured, will be AJ Green, John Ross, and Christian Kirk. Uh, we got a starting set here, we're not going to modify him or anything, because this guy is a stud, Zach Hawkinson, superstar dev trait, 76 overall center. Uh, I really, I just couldn't think of a center to use in this class. Uh, we've used up all the good centers, like maybe like... I literally couldn't think of one. So uh, we got Zach Hawkinson here. Uh, then we just got Def Man, a 77 tackle in the third round. Quick Dev trait. We got a 75 tackle here. We're just trying to build up the offensive line. We had one tackle on the roster coming into this. And the fact that we're walking out with an 82 superstar, a 77 quick, and a 75 normal. Uh, I'm pretty damn happy about that. We got a 73 center, a 71 safety, a 71 defensive end. We hit and we got one of these stud fullbacks, Colby Raymer in the sixth round. And then, you know, not every draft is perfect. C4 can get some duds, even though it doesn't look that way. As we had three pretty bad picks here uh, to round out the draft. But overall, man, studs across studs across studs. And we're, winning the, we're going for a Super Bowl here in year number three in this Bengals rebuild. All right, so here we go as we enter year three. And this team here feels, feels special. I feel like this is definitely one of the better rebuilds that we've done. Uh, so we have Rudolph here, who's an absolute animal in the playoffs, up to an 87. Mix in 86. Wide receivers, A.J. Green still holding on as 94. Kirk in the slot as an 80. John Ross out wide as an 80. Eifert, 95. Offensive line, interior could be better, but you got to figure Lynn and Hawkinson are going to continue to develop. While Hawkinson has that superstar dev trait, so ideally we do have the um, offensive line XP package with Tato Tosenko. He should be an 80 by season's end. we got an 83 rookie tackle, an 84 here, and Trey Adams, who's our top pick last year. Offensive line is looking very, very nice. Uh, defense, you know, defense is looking good. William Jackson, we got newcomer Ronald Darby. We got Willis, Dunlap, Atkins, and Lawson. We got Burfick, Minter, and Haynes. Haynes up to an 85. Strong safety could be better. He's still getting a B minus. And Ha Ha Clinton Dix is an 83. Looking mint. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like, you know, ideally we should make another playoff run here in year three. Maybe we can do the whole deal here. All right, so look at contracts. AJ Green. Three-year deal, so he's not—he's clearly not going to play until he's 34. But we need to try to lock him in. William Jackson needs to come back. Outside of that, probably fine. Maybe a little bit inclined to get Clint Bowling, but I feel like, like again, with how we've been able to draft, we can mix some things around. Tyler Boyd's been replaced by Christian Kirk, uh, so yeah, we're going to go in here and make sure we get AJ Green and William Jackson, who we spent all his XP to get him up to a superstar dev trade. We, we've invested far too much to let William Jackson walk. All right, another playoff run, 10 and 6, playing the 8 and 8 Tennessee Titans. I like to see it. I like to see it. Ooh, okay. Second in the AFC North to the Pittsburgh Steelers, who were 13 and 3. Looking at the stats real quick. Our boy Mason Rudolph, 4,300 passing yards, 32 touchdowns, 13 picks, only sacked 22 times, 
and that is key. Only sacked 22 times with this really, really young offensive line. That is quite exceptional at this point in a rebuild. As far as running the ball, Mixon's been an absolute stud. 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns. 10 got vultured away from Kalafani Muhammad. As far as receiving is concerned, A.J. Green, who we were able to re-sign, 98 catches, 1,400 yards, 9 touchdowns. That's, you know, a fringe all-pro year. 766 and 7 for Eifert. Uh, it's almost 706 for John Ross. 687 and 5 from the rookie Christian Kirk getting involved. Let's see, who, who's the live? Do we have any more live? No live. Look at that. Four sacks given up from a rookie left tackle. Six from our right tackle. Uh, it's outstanding. That's outstanding. On the defensive side, 148 tackles for Minter. 105 for Vontez Verfect. We got 12 and a half sacks. Jordan Willis. 12 for Kyle Lawson. Five for Atkins. Four for Verfect. Only a sack and a half for Carlos Dunlap, which is a little uh, disappointing. Four picks for Verfect. Three for Minter. Three for William Jackson, who we also were able to re-sign. And two picks there. So I like plenty of turnovers. Good defense. Exactly what we want to see. Uh, we're just going to look here at the MVP. What? Jacoby Brissett won the MVP. Mason Rudolph coming at number nine. But because we're doing another playoff run, we got to try to cut out some of the some of the things in the video so it's not going to be three hours long. Uh, so Jacoby Brissett won the MVP award. That is simply ridiculous. I assume we have definitely have some uh, players uh, high up on the, uh, on the award sheet. But we need to jump right into these playoffs and see what we can do. Because it's year three, We'll play Papa Bear. We'll play play the moments, and if I feel we need to get involved, we will do that. Let's jump into this game against the Tennessee Titans. All right, here we go against the eight and eight Titans. I feel I feel somewhat confident after our playoff run last year, but uh, I mean that was last year. It was a brand new year. It looked like we're starting out down two touchdowns to zip, and we're settling for field goals. That's something that we did not do at all during the playoff push last year, as we have to settle for another. Yeah, we're not gonna win. This, it seems like this is like the same damn mold, man. All field goals. All, you know. Are we going to get another field goal? Look at this. Four, four field goals. Are we going to get another one? Five field goals. What? This is a touch. This is an offense that got 10 straight touchdowns last year, and we sell for five field goals. Ridiculous, man. And we're not going to win. That's what happens. You can't, you simply cannot settle. Six, is that six field goals? Or are we going to get a touchdown there? I don't know. I'm not paying attention. 22. You know what? We're going to pop in and see what we can do. 7, 8, 9. We need like a touchdown to tie it. I feel like... I feel like we, we get down the red zone and have to kick a field goal. They kick a field goal right now. That's the mentality that this team's in. Let's see what Mason Rudolph can do. I'm coming in incredibly cold right now. Haven't played Madden in a while. I'm actually just off of the... Uh, the Jai trade. That's when I'm recording this. So I'm really hyped. I'm about Eagles football, and it's awkward now that I'm playing with the Bengals. Well, let's go. See if we can get one of these passes out of bounds. It's a lead Eifert. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Get in, you bastard. Oh, God. Right up to the one-yard line. All right. All right. Do we Do we see? Let's see. Ah, we can't We can't even run it, man. We're going to have to pass it all down. Like, as we went, if we tried to go C4 special to Joe Mixon and didn't get in, It'd be too much of a rush. At least this year, worst case scenario is a sack or a pick. Let's drop back. Lead it to John Ross, who gets the touchdown. Let's go. Exactly what we needed. See, Papa Bear comes in every now and then. He can bail out this team. But now it's in them. Overtime. Score an OT, baby. Get this touchdown and this game. And there we go. Moving to the next round. Put the faith in the team. Get the wheels moving. And the Sims that will take it as we beat the Titans 35-29 to in the wild card round. Three touchdowns for Sam, uh, Mason Rudolph. No picks. So that's 13 touchdowns, no picks in his playoff career for Mason Rudolph. That's simply incredible as we're moving on to the next round. All right, here we go in the divisional round. Going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers in a big-time rivalry matchup. Uh, no idea how this game's going to go. I think they were 13-3. and three. Although they're, the, they're our leaders, so we get to see who the best team in the AFC North is. And right now, get up to a 3 to nothing lead. Defensive battle going on right now. Look at that. Just changing field, changing field. Looks like there might have been a turnover or two. Tied up 3-3 ball game as we're moving down the field. Come on. Don't... What is with the computer just giving us field goal after field goal? Can we buy a touchdown in the sim? In regulation. There we go. 13-10. That's okay. All right, all right. We're down here. Lots going on. Come on, come on, big. Oh, we turned it over. There we go. That might be the nail in the coffin. That's very another field goal. This is ridiculous. Get better field position. All right, there. Oh, couldn't win that one. 
That was a confusing looking sim there, but we fall short to the Pittsburgh Steelers in the divisional round. There's the interception for Mason Rudolph. It was bound to happen. Um, yeah. They stop. I mean, the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. They were the better team this year, but we'll be back next season. Don't worry, but we're one year better. So let's pop in to the off offseason and get ready for year number four. All right, so here we are in the free agency period. Uh, there's one thing we could have done. We could have went all in for uh, Tyreek Hill, gone for a pink slip reunion with Tyreek Hill and... Um, Tyreek Hill and John Ross, but I feel with AJ Green, Christian Kirk, and John Ross, we're fine. I mean, for we only have AJ, we only really need one to two more years, so that's still gonna be good for fine and for AJ Green. Plus, we don't have a whole lot of cap, and we want to have still a little bit enough in the bank that if we have to go to a year five, we can still sign someone. I feel like if we went in on Tyreek Hill and Kyle Joseph, 93 overall safety and a position to need, we probably wouldn't have a whole lot of cash next season. So we'll just go with one. We'll go with Kyle Joseph, and I clearly. Out of these two options, he should be able to take the Bengals over the Browns. We're offering more money, and we're definitely a better team for him to go to. So that is a huge get. First time we've been able to get a Carl Joseph in any of the rebuilds, so I'm excited for that. So let's pop into the draft. Hopefully, we land Joseph, and we have a decent draft class. All right, so looking at the draft class, this was requested on Twitter. I figured I might as well use him. We just need to get maybe a nice two-headed running back to pair with Joe Mixon. So we got an 80 overall running back, normal dev trade. Nothing too, too flashy, but still, an 80 is nice in the first round. So we made him J.K. Dobbins from Ohio State. Outside of that, we just, you know, again, just picking where we can get good fits. 76 guy, building up depth on the offensive line. We got a 78 wide receiver here, Johnny Horton. Good speed in the second round. Uh, probably could have made him someone, but he's probably not going to see a whole lot of action. We got all 70s until the last round. Really, I wanted to try to get depth at corner. We got two 73s. Here in the sixth round, I really wanted a D tackle. No good T tackle scouted, so I went with big defensive ends. Guys that may be able to be converted, like 315 plus pounds. And we got 72 and a 70, so still really need a D tackle. Outside of that, this team's pretty well complete. So let's pop into year four. So year four is beginning, and our team is looking thick. Prince. Second year, he started out as an 83 overall tackle, superstar dead trade, now up to a 93. It's absolutely lethal. I'm telling you right now, for tips, tips and tricks, see for tips and tricks, guys, you know, like, subscribe. Get your offensive lineman into the superstar category, which is easier said than done. But I would say right now, save your XP, get your offensive lineman to superstar dev trade, and then buy the offensive line uh, XP boost for your coach. It's lethal. Look at that. That's already, that's, that's studs. AJ Green, 92, John Ross, 82, Kirk, 83. Uh, we're actually going to, let's change that because let's be honest, Kirk's a much better slot. Mixon's up to a 90, Dobbins, 80, Rudolph's up to a 90. Offense is looking lethal on the defensive side. Ha, -ha Clinton Dix and Carl Joseph at safety. Kevin Minter, little known fact, one defensive player of the year last year. I know we didn't go through the stats and stuff because we're trying to, you know, cut time where we cancel because it's not like an hour and 15 minutes or something like that. But Minter did win. That, so he's at 29. He got a quick dev trade out of it. He's an 86. Burfick has stalled it at 80. I don't think he's developed one bit, but it's still a beast. Haynes, 87. Uh, we have William Jackson, 87. Darby's up one point to an 81. Lawson and Willis, 88 and 87, respectively. Atkins is holding on. But again, like I said, I really kind of want to hit on a D tackle sooner than later. Maybe we'll have to splurge on one if this goes to a year five. But with this team right here, this is a Super Bowl caliber team. So I'm expecting AFC North title. First round buy and a legit Super Bowl push. Let's see what we can do. Let's do the deal. All right, free agency was going to be expensive. Kind of glad we didn't go in on Tyreek Hill because Mixon, Perfect, Lawson, Willis, Ross, all these guys are prime cat. You know, got to go after them. Dunlap, not so much. We'll probably let him slip if we have to. But uh, there goes our free agency money. We, we might not even have enough to sign them all, but we're going to try our best. To do that, right, but I will um, say right now, our record at the midseason point did make horrendous. the playoffs. Thank you, Madden. We have injuries aren't on. Injuries have never been on for my rebuilds. This team didn't make the playoffs. This team's a seven and nine team. This sim is everything about this Madden's terrible. There is no way in hell this is a seven and nine team. There's there's no there's no way to put it. With if there was injuries on and we had a couple crucial injuries along the way, yeah. But oh, this it's just not a good. This game sucks. This game sucks. No other way to put it, man. That's brutal. Um, 
Nation Rudolph on the year, 4,300 passing yards, 29 touchdowns, 17 picks. Only got sacked 11 times. So, I mean, I guess he did his job running the ball, 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns. Dobbins had nine touchdowns, so everything there looks elite. Receiving, 1,000 yards for AJ, 1,000 yards for Eifert, 707 for John Ross, 705 for Christian Kirk. Um, offensive line played well. Look at that, no sacks, really giving up. Defense, they had 139 tackles for Minter. We got after the quarterback, two double-digit sack guys. Once again, Atkins with 12, Lawson with 10. We got picks, seven for William Jackson, five for Haynes, two for Perfect. Intercepts, everything's as high as it was, and yet we still come in at seven and nine. Yearly awards, quickly, Dak Prescott won the MVP. Uh, we'll just look here for offensive play of the year, went to Deshaun Watson, and no one there. Defensive play of the year went to Indomitian Sue, and we had no one. I think that's what we'll do from now on. We'll just do that. Who really cares about position awards? How did this happen? Is there any way we can like look at, let's look at the schedule real quick. Playoff schedule. Team schedule. So we just we just couldn't get couldn't seal the deal here, huh? Lost to uh, let's see, we beat a couple teams here. Big losing streak. Just couldn't get any any momentum. All right, man. I see you, man. You got you got a costume one. We won the Super Bowl in the last two rebuilds, and this is your one coming through with a sick team going. Nah, you know what? We're gonna sprinkle in some bullshit here. Uh, all right, we're going a full five years, fellas. I, I'm surprised to say that. After two back-to-back -back playoff appearances and our team stronger than ever, I guess Madden, Madden decides that we're a 7-9 ball club. All right, so the year four offseason, there was literally no free agents worth signing. Our draft class was, yeah, you know, we got a 76. We just, you know, there wasn't anything there good. Um, and I felt not. I felt more so we got to try to hit on either a D tackle where there's absolutely none. And then, you know, we don't need any more. We have, like, three offensive linemen in each position. So, it's there you go. This is, I guess this is kind of the way to show you that you can really pad your draft class up by drafting offensive linemen. But, you know, for the most part, we did need them on the Bengals. But after that, you know, we got to just try to hit on some skill position players. No D tackles. So, we're able to get a 76 overall wide receiver here. Outside of that, not the best of offseason. Everything's trending down right now for the Cincinnati Bengals. But we're ready for a fifth and final year. Super Bowl or bust terms. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Final year. Look, we got 91 Mixon, 91 Rudolph. Wide receivers, 90, 82, 83. So we have the, the superstar wide receiver. We have options. We have a superstar tight end. Offensive line is looking fire. 94, 83, 83, 82, 86. That is an O-line that can get the job done. Defensively, look at that. All 80s, all almost up, average of like 86 for the linebackers. Aha's an 83. Joseph, 93. We got a we got a legit shutdown corner here. Will Jackson, 88, good compliment option here in Derby. Willis Atkins, Lawson. I knew we don't have another good D tackle, but there's no place. We don't make the playoffs. Are you gonna blame it really on the one weak link of the team, which can be masked behind everyone else? I, I think that's. Uh, well, we actually can look. We can bump it up to a 77. How do we get that guy up here? Cogways, a 77. Look at that. I don't know, fellas. Is, is Madden gonna, you know, pull our chain here or what? Super Bowl time. That's what we're gonna try to do. Even though my game just froze, we'll come back and it's Super Bowl time. Man, I love this game. Freezing it. Oh yeah. All right. So at the end of year five, we, hey, we made the playoffs. I guess you know, Wild Card Bird ten and six. I still frankly think that's a little unacceptable for this team. But we have one more shop to do the deal. Give us just one more shot. That's all we need. Uh, looking at how the team performed first and foremost, we'll just auto spend this XP real quick here in the final year. We got a bunch of XP for Coach, but doesn't really need us. Uh, I mean, it's not gonna help us out any. It kind of sucks. Want to spend this? Why does this take forever? Thank you, game. Are you gonna freeze on me again? All right, so we what? Thirteen to three Browns? What? Second in the AFC North. Uh, look at our stats on the year: 4,200 passing yards, 33 touchdowns, 11 picks from Mason Rudolph. So, you know, obviously an upgrade from last year. We got RG3 as our backup. Uh, running the ball, we got 1,300 yards and eight touchdowns from Mixon, 11 TDs from J.K. Dobbins. So that one-two punch uh, that we really kind of wanted when we drafted Dobbins is working out. Wide receiving is concerned: no thousand-yard receiver, but 87 catches, 977 and six for Eifert, 987. Uh, seven for AJ Green, 906 for Christian Kirk, 606 from John Ross, who's definitely been a little disappointing here in this rebuild. Um, 450 yards and six touchdowns from Mixon is nice. 
As far as defense, 137 tackles here from Kevin Minter. We got 16 sacks for Kyle Lawson, 9.5 from Jordan Willis, 5.5 Atkins, 4 from Vontez Perfect, 4 picks, Haha Clinton Dix, 3 for Jackson and Kyle Joseph. So our elite secondary players are playing as such. Quickly looking at the yearly awards, MVP went to Aaron Rodgers. Is that a Josh Dobbs, really? Josh Dobbs? What, what is this? Mason Rudolph coming in at number nine. Offensive player of the year went to Josh Dobbs. Defensive player of the year going to Chris Jones. Do we get anyone here? No one, unfortunately. All right, I, you know, I see it. This is wonky. It's just a wonky, wonky simulation. But um, let's do this playoff push. Let's get this Super Bowl. This is a Super Bowl caliber team. It's a good team. One of the better teams we've built up here in Madden 18. All right. We're keeping the training wheels on. We're just going to play the play the moments here. We're not going to need to come in and control the team because we have won uh, two Super Bowls in a row. It's not like we're in desperate need where I need to control it. Uh, but, of course, we're down 14 to nothing and uh, can't score. Turn the ball over in the red zone. Excellent. Come on. Put some points out. All right, we got a touchdown back. 14-7 to ball game. But I guess this Jags, this prolific Jags offense is absolutely embarrassing. Our team full of 90s on the Bengals defensive side of things. And there's an in interception there. Uh, yeah. I should. I had a gut feeling, man. You should have known. It's bad. I mean, you look at the Jags team. I think this Jags team, when I was putting in there an 83 overall, our, our Bengals base rating is a 90. I think we have a 94 offense and an 89 defense. And we get pummeled in the wild card round by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, yeah, man. It's the way she go. I mean, we can't be too salty because we've won the last couple rebuilds. But again, you know, not making the playoffs last year and then going one and done, losing to the Jags in the wild card. I'm not gonna be the one to say it. I'll let maybe people in the comments say it that man's not. Look, I didn't. I had no influence either. You can't be like, oh, C4 came in through a couple picks and stuff. This is the game, baby. This is how the the simulation works with a terrifyingly good Bengal squad. Kind of annoying that we just burnt through. Uh, one of the better rock we but we just burned through a 94 95 tackle and a 90 qb that we were able to draft and and, and it had nothing really to show for it um but there you go that's the Bengals rebuild i mean we built a good team a fun exciting team so i guess that was definitely where you'll get the enjoyment out of this rebuild um as always guys if your first time stopping by don't be afraid of that subscribe button let me know in the comment section below what team you want me to rebuild next i mean there's a chance patriots no more um Jimmy Garoppolo, so a different approach to that rebuild there. I don't necessarily know. Do I trade Tom Brady again, huh? Do I, do I, you know, take YouTube by storm, make the most controversial rebuild moment in, in YouTube history from Madden 17? Do I repeat it in Madden 18? You'll have to turn back if you want to see me do that. Tom, turn back and uh, check me out next week. Uh, smash the like button if you enjoyed. Smash the like button if you're just thinking that this sim is bullshit in Madden. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.